Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We are working some initial value problem examples in this video. We've got three of them we're going to work here and we're showing them to you what we're gonna work in order. So if you wanna to skip to a particular problem, you can go check that out. If you're looking for an intro or for a video on just finding the general solution for these, you can check that out in our playlist on differential equations. Let's go ahead and move to our first example here. We have y prime is equal to 2xy over y squared minus one and our condition is y of two equals one. Remember when we have prime notation and separable equations, we generally want to write it in differential notation. I'm going to write my y prime as dy dx, and we have two xy over y squared minus one, and we will worry about the condition after we get to our general solution. Now, separating these variables, think about what we need to do. I need to bring the dx to the other side, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply dx on both sides. That will get rid of that down there. You'll notice all of my x's are already on one side together. So I'm going to multiply y squared minus 1 up to the top on the other side. I'm going to divide by y on both sides. That will bring it down to the bottom on the other side. And so what we'll end up with on the left is y squared minus 1 on the top. We'll have a y on the bottom and then we'll have our dy. So that'll be our left side. And then once we have all of that gone from the right side, we just have 2x dx on the right side here. Now we're separated, we should be able to integrate these, right? So we're gonna integrate with respect to y and x. I'm gonna go ahead and split this up into two terms here. On the left, it'll be a little nicer to work with. So we'll say the integral of y squared over y would be y minus one over y dy, and that's going to be a bit nicer to work with, right? Equals the antiderivative of 2x with respect to x. Okay, so if we go ahead and take the antiderivative, I'll go ahead and move up here, so that would be 1 half y squared minus the antiderivative of dy over y, 1 over y dy, is going to be ln of y, technically plus a c, but we'll go ahead and save our constant for the other side equals the antiderivative of 2x dx, which is going to be x squared. And I'll go ahead and put our constant now. So we'll say plus c1, or you can just say c if you'd like. Once we're here, I could say, is it reasonable to solve for y? It's really ugly to solve for y. I have a y squared term and a y in a natural log. So there's no way really to easily get y equals in a reasonable amount of time. So we'll go ahead and leave this implicit, and we'll just solve for our constant now. So our Condition, y of 2 equals 1, we'll use that to solve for the constant. Remember that says that when we plug in 2 for x, we will get 1 for y. So those are the values we'll plug in to solve for c. So we will get 1 half times 1 squared minus ln of 1 equals, plugging in 2 for x, we'd get 2 squared plus c1. So let's go back and simplify some things here. So 1 half times 1 squared would just be a half minus ln of 1 is 0 equals 2 squared which is 4 plus c1. And now if I subtract 4 from both sides then I'll have 1 half minus 4 for my c1. And if I get a common denominator and figure that out, then that becomes negative 7 halves for my c1. So I can go ahead and take that value for c1 and put it into my general solution. That will be my particular solution. That will be the solution that goes through 2 comma 1. So that'll have 1 half y squared minus ln of y equals x squared minus 7 halves, or if you want, you don't like the fractions, you could multiply through by 2 if you want for everything, so you could say y squared minus 2 ln y is equal to 2x squared minus 7 if you prefer. Either of those would be a good solution, I think. Okay, looking at our next one, we have y dy dx minus x equals 0, and our condition is y of 0 equals 4. So one thing we want to do, I think, is notice dy is on top here. That means dx needs to be on the other side. So x is on the right side, y is on the left. 
Uh, all the y's are already on the left side, so that's good. Let's go ahead and move our x term to the other side. So we'll say y dy dx, adding x to the other side would just say equals x. And then once we have this, we can multiply dx to the other side, and that will give us y dy equals x dx. We are separated, and this is not so bad, so we'll go ahead and integrate both sides. And the antiderivative of y is going to be 1 half y squared plus c, but we'll save it for the other side. The antiderivative of x is going to be 1 half x squared plus some constant. And now can we reasonably solve this for y? I think we can, right? Let's go ahead and multiply everything by 2. So that would give us y squared is equal to x squared plus, now what's 2 times a constant? Answer is just some constant, right? So we'll just leave c1 there. You can say 2c1 if you want, but it's uh, more than I think we need to say. And now to get rid of the square, I think I want to go ahead and take the root of both sides, right? So we'll say y is equal to plus or minus the square root of x squared plus c1. Okay, now what we'll need to do is solve for our c. So remember, this condition is saying when x is equal to 0, we will have a y value of 4. And that's the condition we're going to use to solve c. Now, in order to do this, I will need to know which version of the function I'm supposed to use. Am I supposed to use y equals the positive root here, or am I supposed to use y equals negative root here? The answer lies in examining our condition. The only thing I can get out of a root is a positive number. So this plus or minus on the outside is going to determine which sign I get for my y value, won't it? And the only way to get positive 4 for y is going to be to make sure that I use the positive version of this root. So we are going to actually use y equals the positive version of x squared plus c1. Okay, so we're going to use that. We'll plug in and we'll solve for our c here, right? So if I plug in 4, I would get 4 equal to the positive root of 0 squared plus c1, right? So I get 4 is equal to the square root of c1. I would need to square both sides to get c1. That would tell me that 16 is equal to my c1 there, right? So I can go ahead and take a constant value of c and put it into the particular function that I used. I didn't use the negative version of the root, right? I used the positive version only. So we would go ahead and say here that y is equal to just the positive root of x squared plus 16. Now one thing we want to note, some people will choose to solve for their constants, their c1, at different points once they get a general solution here. They may solve c1 first and then simplify, they may simplify as we did, and then solve c1. Either is fine. We just want to go ahead and make a note here. Let's say that you had at this step solved for your constant. If you had solved for your constant here at this step, you would have plugged in your 0 and your 4, and you would have gotten right here, that c1 was equal to 8. But if you work forward from this point using a constant of 8 and do the steps that we did to get to our n solution, you will end up with the same answer that we got. It will be equivalent. So you don't have to worry about solving c here and getting something different than we got at a particular place. Let's look at our last one here, dy dx equals 2x plus 2xy squared all over y. Our condition is y of 0 equals negative 2. In this one you can see I think maybe the way to pull out the x's on that right hand side is to factor out that common 2x there. So we'll go ahead and do that and we'll say dy dx is equal to 2x times the quantity 1 plus y squared. And we still have y on the bottom. Now, separating, not so bad. I just need to do a similar thing like I did before. I'm going to multiply my dx to the other side. So multiply by dx puts it over here. I'll go ahead and multiply y to the other side. And then since this is on top, I would need to divide that to the other side. So our 1 plus y squared is going to be down below. So we'll actually end up with y over 1 plus y squared dy on the left. And on the right, we get 2x dx. 
We are separated in terms of our variables, so we can now take the antiderivative with respect to y and x. For this integral here, we might notice that this works using u substitution. So for this one, u is equal to 1 plus y squared, and du is then 2y dy. And if we have 2y dy, this is really just y dy, so you could divide by 2 if you prefer and say 1 half du is equal to y dy. But we'll go ahead and do this one by u substitution. This one's just a basic integral that we can do. So let's go ahead and plug all that info in over here up top. So we'll have a 1 half integral of du over u is equal to integral 2x dx. Okay, so here we have a log rule. This will be 1 half ln of absolute value u is equal to antiderivative of 2x is going to be x squared, and I'll go ahead and put my constant of integration on the right side. Now let's go ahead and replace our u, so getting back in terms of y, 1 plus y squared. Now if I put 1 plus y squared in here, that's always going to be positive, so I won't need the absolute value brackets after all there. So let's just say 1 half ln of parentheses. 1 plus y squared is equal to x squared plus my constant. Okay, so from here let's go ahead and at least multiply everything through by 2, so that'll give us ln of 1 plus y squared is equal to 2x squared plus what's 2 times a constant? A constant. We'll just say c1 still. Uh, let's go ahead and I think in the last one we solved for c at the end. Let's just go ahead and solve for c now and show you that it's okay to do that. So if I want to use my condition here at this step, this is saying when I plug in 0 for x, then that gives me a y value of negative 2. So we'll be plugging that in. If I plug negative 2 in for y here, I'll get 4, 1 plus 4, so that'll give us ln of 5 in there is equal to 2 times 0 squared would be 0, right, plus c1. So I would get that c1 is equal to ln of 5 at this step if I solve for c1 right here. So let's go ahead and plug that back in and move forward and solve the rest of the way for y. So we would have ln of 1 plus y squared is equal to 2x squared plus ln of 5. And now we want to solve for y. Let's give ourselves some more room. So get rid of the natural log first. Let's take the exponential of both sides. So that's going to give us then 1 plus y squared is equal to e to the, now all of this is in an exponent, 2x squared plus ln 5. But we can break this up using properties of exponents, right? So I could say 1 plus y squared is equal to e to the 2x squared times e to the ln 5. Now e to the ln of something is just that something, right? So that gives us 5. So we get 1 plus y squared is equal to 5 e to the 2x squared and now if I want to solve the rest of the way for this, I would need to subtract 1 and then take the square root of both sides, right? So that's going to give us, if I move over here, that will give us that y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5e to the 2x squared minus 1. And now we don't actually have both of these as our answer. Remember that our condition helps us determine if I have more than one option for y. So if I want to know which of these it is, think about which of these is going to give us a negative y value. The only way to get a negative y value, we can't get the negative part out of the root, right? We can only take square roots of positives. So that means we really need to be using the negative version of this root. So we'll go ahead and just say, actually I'll go ahead and just erase here, y equals negative root 5e to the 2x squared minus 1 is our particular solution for the original problem. Okay everyone, hopefully this helps with some understanding of initial value problems and sometimes using the initial value to determine whether it's a positive or a negative case for a function. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.